each one of those steps. But um, before I do, I'm, I'm just going to kind of show you the result of, of some things you can do. And, you know, when I've seen some demos, I hate, you know, when there's a big old bag of wind up there just talking and talking. So I'm going to show you guys uh, three quick demos and then I'll uh, kind of start from scratch and show you how I got there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a butterfly joint right here on this little pretend crack. So imagine this is a live edge uh, slab. I'm going to install just a quick little butterfly joint. It'll be perfect. I'm also going to do a little one inch circle around this X. And then I'm going to do a sauce 101 hinge at a specific location right here. So I'm going to do those very quickly. Um, and I'd like you to kind of flick your eyes from, you know, this front facing screen right here uh, to this screen right here, because everything I see on the tool, you'll also see. Um, so without further ado, we will dive right into it. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that, I, like I said, that first part, I just kind of wanted to kind of show you uh, the tool, just to kind of show you the end result. And then I will go back through and show you exactly how we got here. But it's a remarkable machine. Um, and as you can see, I'll tilt my camera over here. Uh, three things, like I said, a butterfly joint right there, a sauce 101 hinge here, and then a one inch circle right over that X. And, um, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. That is uh, about as tight as a fit as you can get. There's a, a butterfly and then there's that sauce. One a one hinge and, uh, oh, I said that sauce one a one hinge would be at a specific location. And that location was uh, exactly five inches in from this edge. So if I measure the center of that hinge, you can see right there, it's five inches. So, so we should be spotlighting that other camera of his folks. Maybe I can, uh, I might be able to pin it. But uh, people wanted both screens. I, I think both screens is fine. We can see everything. Yeah, I can see. Okay. Do you yeah. not have them both pinned, Ed? I do not. Well, uh, you know what, yeah. actually, uh, you know, because uh, again, this was just the kind of the first uh, three minutes of the presentation. So I think from here on out, having both screens will be very, very helpful. But okay. um, again, uh, what's phenomenal about this Shaper Origin is that ease of the process. All three of these were executed using our universal three step process, scan, design and cut. And I know that seems silly uh, to keep saying that, but no matter what any Shaper 
user in the world is doing. They're always going to work in those three steps in that order. And maybe you're not interested, you know, in doing butterflies or hinges or pocket holes, but you use that same process or uh, yeah, I use that same, everyone uses that same process to create much, much more uh, complex projects. So my, my very first shaper project was this right here. It's called the chronic chair. It took me about three hours and uh, I got the cut file, which I'll explain what that is here in just a minute, off of uh, what's called the Shaper Hub. So that was my very first chair. It's, honestly, it's not that comfortable, but uh, <laughs> you throw a cushion on it and it, it looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, my COVID project was uh, this, this electric guitar. So notice I've still even got the tape on it. Uh, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm a decent salesman, but I, I like, I, I'm an average woodworker. I, if you told me, you know, two years ago that I could make one of these electric guitars, I would have told you, you know, you're kidding, but um, it's, uh, it's not finished, but um, it does play. It's my rendition of Fast Car, and obviously you can see I'm, I'm not a metal worker either. I spent about four hours on YouTube learning how to solder, but um, it does play, it does work, and it, it's something that that would not have been possible without the Shaper origin. So the big question I think you're all probably asking yourself is, you know, why do I care? How can I use this in my shop? Or maybe even better yet, how was I able to get here? And that's what I'm going to spend the majority of the presentation um, kind of, uh, you know, dissolving is that scan design cut, what you're doing in each stage. And uh, we'll start from scratch right here. I've got a board, uh, well, I say a board prepped and ready is there's no scaling restrictions. So this is just a 12 inch by 24 inch piece of MDF. It could be a, uh, you know, a four by eight sheet of plywood. Um, and the setup process will be virtually the same. I like to use double-sided tape to secure it. You know, the clamps don't get in the way um, uh, while I'm working. And uh, let's just kind of start from scratch. So anytime you're using this tool, the way you prep a piece to be origin ready is very simple. You take this shaper tape and you lay it out onto whatever it is you're working on. Now the rule of thumb here is when in doubt, roll it out and that's it. Uh, always apply more tape as opposed to less. Tape doesn't have to go in any particular direction. I could have one going vertical kind of one at an angle, but just to kind of save myself a little tape um, and playing by the rule book, I'm gonna space my tape rows out about four inches apart from the last one. And this is more than enough tape. Once you have a piece taped up, um, you can add reference marks. So if you want to, you know, uh, let's pretend that X means something to you. Maybe it's the center of your board, the location you want to install a piece of hardware. Um, it, it's just something, you know, you want to see while you're working. You can make those reference marks uh, and, and those will show up while you're using the origin. And then I'm also just going to draw a pretend crack. So if this was a live edge slab, obviously those slabs have a lot of cracks in them and you will see those features on uh, while you're working. So we're taped up, we're ready to go. And now we're going to hop on tool. Slide my camera back over here. I will adjust it so you guys can see. Hopefully you guys can see both screens. So if you remember, scan, design, and cut. You'll see those words right there on the right-hand side. So when I'm in scan, I'm going to select new scan. When I see uh, the green start or the orange cancel, I noticed that the buttons on each side, uh, the, the green button kind of refers to that. I could touch the screen, but I'm going to click the corresponding button to start my scan. Now, once you have a piece taped up, you're literally going to scan in that workspace. So if this was a whole four by eight sheet, you would move the tool around as if you were scanning it in and scan the entire piece. Now the idea here is, is to scan so that you can see your entire workspace. So it's literally taking a panoramic photo 
I probably should have mentioned there's a camera built into the front of this machine that is recognizing all those dominoes which are attached to our workspace. And uh, once I've got that whole works workspace in view, I just uh, another click on the green button to finish. So that's step one, scan. At this point, the camera in the front, uh, I don't wanna throw too much too fast at you, but I'm gonna go ahead and hover my router bit over that X I drew. And you'll see that X on the screen. So what's happening is the camera in the front of this machine is looking at those dominoes, doing a real time calculation to determine not only the exact location of the tip of that spindle, but also the image to project. So you need to get comfortable with the fact that what you see on the screen is a projected image of what's right below the tip of the router. Um, so the second rule of thumb is this tool always needs to be pointed at tape. Let's pretend, for example, I wanna do some work up on that top edge. If I push the tool forward, my tape meter, which right now is fully black, it has a maximum tape reading. If I push it forward, that meter starts to diminish. It's about, you know, there is about a quarter full. Now it's red and now it's frozen. The reason is the tool is looking out here. It can't see the tape and it doesn't know where it is on the workspace. But Origin does not care what angle or orientation it sees tape, just has to see it. So if I just rotate the tool back towards the tape, as soon as it can see some dominoes, it's picked up its location. And there is that top right corner of my piece. And I could do something right there. So that is step one, scan. Um, Joe, if there's any questions coming through on the chat. Oh, you there, there, were, there weren't any on the chat, uh, but uh, so when you scan it, so what it's, what, it, what it's got now on its little memory banks is, is that it now knows where, it now knows every square inch of that board. It, it, is that, is that? Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, got Correct. it. So it's, yeah. it knows where it is on that workspace. And that little reticle you see in the center uh, is representative of the router bit. So anything okay. that, it, that reticle is hovered over, um, you, can, you can rest assured that the router bit is hovered over. Okay, so right Once now you, it's on. Look, looks like it's right on the crack. Right on the crack, and if I look yeah. under the bit, sure enough, I see the crack right there. Got it. And do those features that you're interested in seeing, like the crack, do they? Can you add something to the board now, and it will it see it or no? Correct. So basically, um, step one: scan. You're kind of identifying the workspace, identifying and defining what you're working on. Step two, design, is where you are going to, uh, well, add stuff to cut. So the mm -hmm. goal of design is to place a cut file onto the piece you just scanned in. Okay, that I, is I, it. Do, I do have a couple questions, Joe. Uh, okay. can, you lift, can you lift it up and will it refine it? So if I, you picked up the, the origin there, if it, would it refine its location? Not only would it refine its location, uh, origin remembers everything. So any workspace that I have ever scanned in, as yeah. soon as I put origin on it, it will immediately recognize that unique combination of dominoes and mm -hmm. know that you're working on that workspace. Like if I were to pull out, um, you know, that first board I did. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, uh, let's see, I've actually, I've worked on this workstation before, so I, I could do either one. As soon as you place origin onto it, kind of watch my tool screen. It says workspace recognize. I was using this to cut out some butterflies. I, I know there's a little bit of a glare there, um, but it, it knows that I've switched workspaces. So you have that confidence that anytime you're cutting or you need to stop halfway that you can pick up right where you left off without really having to do anything. Origin just remembers it. Gotcha. And another question is, uh, uh, can you, uh, what happens if the wood's not flat? I mean, if it's, yeah, I mean, uh, the ideal scenario is that the wood is mostly flat. I mean, like rough cut off a sawmill is fine, um, mm -hmm. but any kind of like big curves, you're going to have to account for kind of on your own because th this is a robot and it will do everything you tell it to. Um, but there, there's really no way for, to, for it to account for some like big kind of like curvatures or things like that. So um, it's not the answer to everything, but it is incredibly accurate um, and, you know, really you want to be working on more or less flat surfaces well then here's a here's a odd question for you that uh 
Uh, could I use it to flatten a board? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure you've got a, a, a tool in your shop that's better designed. Yeah, that's computers. probably true. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm thinking of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre precision is kind of the key word with this tool here. You gotcha. So, um, so we've done our scan. Um, and just so you know, guys, at any point you can go back to your, you know, you can go back through steps. Uh, once you have a piece scanned in, if you realize, oh, I didn't add a reference mark, you can go back to scan. And rather than do a new scan, you can select add to scan. And that's going to stitch any new additions, any new tape to that original workspace, and you can get going. But um, back to design. So the goal of design is to place a cut file. Where do you get these cut files? The first answer is you can create basic ones right here on the tool. So you don't need to touch a computer. So if I select create, you see we have the option of circle, rectangle, pen, text, box joint. Those are all on tool extensions. Uh, let's do a, a, a rectangle this time. So if I hit create rectangle, um, I, uh, I tap width, get used to seeing this calculator because you'll see it a lot. We'll do a two inch wide by one inch tall rectangle and we can put a quarter inch on the radius. I actually made my coffee table uh, out of a, a four by four piece of plywood with a cool laminate on top uh, using this exact feature. So 0.25. Um, and there is on my screen, you can see that rectangle. If I use this little toggle ball, I can kind of zoom out and see where that rectangle is on my bigger workspace. I'm going to position it right below that X. Once I get it to a spot I like, I just go ahead and click the green button to place it. And it will live there forever until I manually delete it. Um, so so you, could, some... you could move it if you needed to then. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I could just basically oh, cancel. I can hover over it. And I can copy this. I can copy any object. It'll duplicate it. Um, or you saw I had the option to copy or remove. If I removed it, it would erase it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to create a circle this time. Diameter. Let's do a 1.231 inch circle. Very specific. I'm going to put it right over that X. Now I've placed it. So in a nutshell, this is what you're after in design is you're trying to place cut files. Um, and there are some basic ones you can create right on the tool. Now what's phenomenal about this machine, and I'm not, I'm sure there's a variety of woodworkers out there. Uh, personally, I'm not uh, all that skilled in like digital design, but when you buy one of these, you get access to what's called the shaper hub. I'm going to share my screen here and hope that it, uh, that it works. Uh, Joe kind of, Help right. me out if it doesn't work. We'll like give it a go. See what happens. Should mm -hmm. work. Can you see that? Yep, I can okay. see it. So when you buy one, uh, it'll ask you to create a Shaper Hub account. The Shaper Hub is a library of prefab cut files that are ready to go and free to any Shaper owner. So everything from jigs from the workshop to you know cutting boards to entire pieces of furniture, um, th they're all for you. Um, and if I, you know, just search, I'm sure there's some Fest tool people out there. If I just search, you know, MFT tops, like maybe I need a new MFT. So I'm going to type that in there. There is the cut file for a new MFT top and there's some fancier ones, but the way you get it onto your origin is you just hit sync to shaper origin. Now there's over 1500 different project files on the Shaper Hub and it grows every day. Uh, if you do your own design, uh, the file type you need is SVG, that's Scalable Vector Graphic. But if you're not comfortable with that, I would really encourage you to kind of check out the Shaper Hub. You can also browse it without being, um, you know, without being an owner, but you won't be able to download the files. Jigs for the workshop, I mean, uh, furniture, guitar, uh, blanks, all. Literally, all, if you think of it, um, there's probably something on the Shaper Hub. And if you're doing hardware inserts, there's, there's nothing better. Uh, flush ring. Um, so I would really encourage you to check it out and just know that all of these are available for free. There's oftentimes some additional instruction there, but the way you get it accessible on tool is just hit sync to origin. I'm signed into the same Shaper Hub account on the tool, which ideally is always connected to Wi-Fi. So that Shaper Hub, I can't talk about enough. Um, 
but it's it's a phenomenal feature of being kind of in the shaper family. So um, back to uh, on the tool. We've talked about create. We're in our second uh, stage here, design. If we want to uh, access one of those files from the shaper hub, we will select import. So if I hit import, you'll see here are all the cut files that I've selected from the shaper hub. There's that MFT top. If I select butterfly inlays, I've got 15 different styles of butterflies I could use. I'm going to select this one this time. I'll tap that. And notice as soon as I grab a cut file, I have options. I could scale it to a new size. I could rotate it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And then I can place it right over that crack. As soon as I click place, it's going to live there forever until I, uh, I guess, or until I pull the tape up. Um, and the way I'm placing these files, guys, is I, I'm doing it visually, meaning, uh, you know, I just, I, I grab a butterfly, I rotate it, and I, I kind of maneuver it over that, that crack to my liking. Uh, you know, if it looks good to my eye, then it, it's good to me, and I place it. So uh, same thing with that rectangle. I just, I positioned it below the X. That's visual placement. That's what we call visual placement. It's fast. Um, it's flexible, it's intuitive, but it's not inc incredibly accurate. So you can place objects uh, with this origin uh, along a grid. Very easy to create a grid. I'm gonna do one right now at, uh, using origin. It'll ask you to do a couple probes. So I just select a grid, a uh, new grid. I'm gonna have these increments be half inch. I'll take two probes on the X axis, that bottom horizontal edge and then one on the Y, that left vertical edge. And I don't know if you guys can see that screen, but what happened is an X and a Y yeah, we have now appeared at the, at the top. And so now uh, if I wanna place, uh, let's, do the, let's do the flush ring pole. If I wanna place kind of a cabinet pole at a specific location, there's that cut file. You'll see before when I turn the tool, it would change the orientation. Mm -hmm. um, but with the grid, you ha would have to actually specify a degree of rotation to rotate it. So the grid is incredibly accurate, but it's incredibly picky. Um, and you also need to specify what piece of that object you want at the, well, let's, uh, let, let's throw it to the audience. Uh, if somebody could throw me uh, kind of a, a coordinates uh, so many inches in and so many inches up to place this latch. I'll, I'll put it right there. Um, so feel free to, to kind of put in the, the chat. Could you, uh, can you, uh, can you just specify uh, locations by entering the coordinates? Not yet. Um, but uh, stay tuned uh, to, for sure. Uh, Cause that, okay. that is something we're working on, but so you can't punch them in, but it does tell you where, Six inches in, eight inches up. Okay, so I'm going to go six. Notice my X is six. And I'm going to go eight. But I, can you, you can it? get to specific locations. Can you rotate it There's by 45 and a half. degrees? And I'll rotate it 45 degrees. Cool. Okay. But now notice um, I need to, basically the bottom center of my latch is at that six, eight. That's called the anchor point. So I'm going to change it so that the center center is actually what's at that six, eight location. So like I said, the grid is incredibly accurate, but incredibly picky. I'm going to go ahead and place that right there. Um, but once you have it set on a workspace, it's a part of the workspace and there's a little toggle button. So you can just toggle it on and off, you know, decide you know, whether or not you want to use it. Let's go ahead and cut this one out. Um, just so you guys can see that whole three-step process. So once I have objects placed, that's the goal of design, I'm going to head down to cut mode. When you head down to cut mode, you'll notice that uh, a white circle appears around my reticle. This is the magic sauce of origin right here, folks. I'm going to kind of uh, demonstrate it for you. So when you're on a cut path, which is that revolving charted line, I've got two different cut paths here. When you are on a cut path, your aim is that big white circle. And as long as you were within a half inch of where you need to be, uh, the tool is gonna correct for you. So I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but I'm all over the place, but that bead, which represents the router bit, is staying right on that cut path. 
Yeah, we can see that. Okay, that works. Yeah. All right. Um, maybe I'll try and zoom out here just a little bit on my. So you guys can see that that's the the spindle of the router right there, and if you watch as I maneuver it, it's moving independently from the body of the tool. Oh yeah. And if you pop out of the kind of the corrective range, like right now I'm kind of out here at the max, it will just eject the router bit. So if you're cutting at a smooth, steady pace, um, there's gonna be no visible damage if you go beyond the maxima of that corrective range. Um, but you know, the flip side of that coin is if you're flying through a cut and you pop out, expect a little bit of tear out. So let's go ahead and install this latch pole. Okay, so now that we're in cut mode, you see that we have options on the left-hand side. That's kind of the workflow of this tool. The three major steps will always be on the right-hand side, and then you'll have options over here on the left. So we're in cut mode, and the first thing I need to do, or the first thing I do on any new object, is I just see if there's more than one cut path on an object. I've got two here. Um, so it's telling me the depth is 0.44 inches. I'm going to program that in 0.44 inches right into the calculator. And uh, right now I'm cutting on the inside of that first cut path. But what I really want to do is hog out the middle there. The second option is the cut type. You have the option of inside, outside, on the line and pocket. And what's awesome about this tool is you can command it to do things right on the fly. So I'm telling it I'm going to tell it to cut a pocket, which is kind of my meat cleaver. I'm going to pocket out this area at 0.44 and then finish it up with an inside pass. There's my pocket. And you probably noticed at this point, anytime you cut, it will draw a shade of blue. So it shows you what you've cut. And if you increase the depth, it'll draw a darker shade of blue. So you always have an idea of what you've cut at, at what depths based on that kind of blue paint line. Um, so now I'm going to clean up that, that, uh, that edge by doing an inside cut at 0.44. And last but not least, I'm going to finish this off uh, uh, with this outer pass at 0 0.07. So I'm just going to program that new depth in 0 0.07, and this should be it. Okay. Here is that, there is that latch pull, whoops. At 45 degrees. Wow. And I think it was six, eight. That's eight. Eight inches to the center. Six yeah. inches to the center. Yep. Hope you guys can see that. Yep. 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 Dead on. <laughs> it is dead on. Yeah. Um, so that's the whole idea of this tool. It's it's bringing that kind of precision cutting uh, to your workshop without having, you know, that crazy tech skill of being able to design stuff on a computer. Now, if you do have that skill, it's only going to enhance the experience. Um, you can create your own cut files um, as long as they're in SVG format. They are, they're going to be good to go on origin. So uh, does it, does it bother the tool to encounter damaged tape? Uh, great question. Uh, no, not at all. So the tape was, is 
is designed to be kind of cut through when you're working. It's never looking at just one domino. Uh, it's always looking at a collection of dominoes. So when you cut through uh, a piece of tape, it, it does negate that one domino, but it's looking at the ones around it. And um, a combination of those dominoes is always unique. It always knows exactly where it is. And how deep can it cut? Uh, 1.7 inches is the max it can, it can cut. Obviously, you would take that off in several passes, mm -hmm. um, but right. uh, that's, that's, the, that's the max it can go. Yeah, well, it's, it's plenty for the stuff I would do anyway. Yeah. So, uh, Dave, thank you very much for those uh, coordinates. Um, I, I guess at this point, uh, uh, well, uh, quickly, I guess I'd like to talk about workstation for just a couple minutes. I know I'm right at the 30 minute mark, but um, uh, right there, you know, we were working on kind of a, just a flat surface. When you hop over to workstation, which I know it's, it'll be a little tough for you guys to see, so I'll try and reposition you without screwing all this up. Uh, workstation is a way to vertically clamp pieces, uh, you know, so you can work on the edge like that sauce 101 hinge. Uh, if you obviously you install those hinges on the edge, it, uh, I'm not sure what I do with that hinge, but, uh, it's a way for you to kind of work on that, just that top edge, or it's phenomenal for doing tenons, um, like that butterfly. You can see, I've got one right there and clamping it in the same position every single time, uh, kind of it makes it makes repeatability very, very easy. So Workstation is $450, Origin is $2,500, which in the CNC world is very reasonable. But if you buy them together, there is a bundle price where you save 50 bucks. We're a Festool owned company. So if you know Festool, you know that promotions and discounts are hard to come by. Um, and that's kind of the, the main one we offer. So mm -hmm. you don't need this to work with Origin, but once you have it and have done, you know, some, some tenons and box joints and dub tails which are all possible with workstation it's it's kind of hard to live without so you can use um, this obviously for doing mortise and tenon joints i mean absolute, yeah, it's, it's absolutely yeah absolutely yeah you know like if this butterfly was my kind of my tenon i think i well it's on the other piece but uh it would fit right in there and mm -hmm. uh there's so many features of this tool i could go on and on and on but uh and what's cool is you have them right at the tip of your fingers. So we talked, you know, here's the rectangle I drew earlier. I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit more about this second option, this inside, outside on the line. So on an inside cut, you're quite literally kissing the router bit up flush against the inside edge of your object. But you can command the tool just by selecting that to cut on the outside of your object. So you see now the router bit is being brought in from the outside and that's very useful for cutting out the positives versus the negatives, uh, especially if, you know, if you're doing inlays. You can also assign offsets up to a thousandth of an inch. So, which is the third feature. If I, you know, let's say I do a 10th of an inch offset, you see it's pushed my cut path in a 10th of an inch. You can make those negative, which expand them out um, just beyond kind of that edge, just to get that perfect friction fit. And what, you can also change up the bits. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What's the smallest bit you can use, or what? Uh, what are the have, bits sizes, any, I guess? Yeah, so the, the bits that come with it are you have a quarter inch spiral up cut, uh, an eighth inch spiral up cut, and then an engraving bit. Uh, but you can use, you know, I've used a, a half inch cutter head on a quarter inch bit, and that's where you you punch in that information right here because it'll make the calculations based off that. Let's pretend that I threw a, a, a half inch router bit in there you'll see how my cut path is now literally that entire, uh, that object. Or if I changed it to an eighth inch bit, or actually engraving will be a little more dramatic. You'll see that it's, it's previewing what an engraving bit will do. Mm -hmm. Very important that the information that you punch in matches what's actually in the tool because uh, Origin's gonna, gonna make all the calculations based off of that. Oh, okay. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's all the questions so far. Uh, those I've been asking the questions as we go, so we're good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, it, um, it's. Oh, what what software, software do most people use to create the SVG files? Great question. Um, there's a variety. So um, 
uh, Adobe Illustrator is one of them. Fusion 360 uh, is even better because there's a there's a Shaper extension uh, that's built in. Um, uh, SketchUp is another one. Uh, Inkscape is a, one of the free ones. So there, there, there's a lot of different softwares out there. The the key is no matter what you use that you get it into an SVG format. Mm-hmm. That's what the tool accepts. Gotcha, gotcha. Close up of the tool itself, the different angles. Yeah, sure. So um, I'll try and kind of move my camera around here. But um, let's see if I can do this. So this is, I'm gonna try and give you a close up of the tool. Kind of the origin, you know, it's a little bit bigger than actual router. Mm-hmm. Camera's located right here. And you were showing me when we were when we were doing our practice session that, uh, and you kind of showed us a little bit there as you're going around on a trying to keep doing your cut. This whole motor router is all moving independent of the of the uh, of the. Uh, of the, uh... it, it, it is. Yeah. So I, I was having trouble getting kind of the right angle for that, but um, yeah, no, uh, I get you. What, when you're cutting with this tool and I'll, I'll give it a try here. So right now I'm going to, I'm going to do an air cut, which is a cut simulation mm-hmm. on that rectangle. Okay. And when you're cutting, so I know you guys just have to kind of, yeah, that works word for it. That's a pretty good uh, angle right there. Okay. Um, when you're cutting, as long as you're close, the tool auto corrects for you. So that's kind of the, the magic here. So kind of, you know, flick your eyes from the, uh, the router or the spindle and the body of the tool. You'll see it should look like it's staying perfectly still. Uh-huh. So I'm literally all over this cut path. Oh, I popped out there. Yeah. But as you're cutting, that router is, is is compensating for me. Right. So you, you're moving the tool, it's, but the router is then moving independent of the, all the movements you're doing with the with the uh, mount with the. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that is. Uh, like I said, uh, normally I, these, these, uh, I do a lot of dealer trainings. They go for about two hours really to get the best feel for the tool, uh, to get a, a you know, a, a fundamental feel for the tool. But the most important thing and the coolest is that three-step process that scan mm-hmm. design and cut. And as long as you have an idea of, uh, kind of what you're trying to achieve in each stage, you're, you're in a pretty good position for success. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't know digital design, that shaper hub is phenomenal, and then we also have a program called Shaper Assist, where you can sketch something on a napkin, uh, email it to us. We'll say, okay, that's about a $5 project. It's very reasonable. We will design whatever cut uh, file you want uh, for kind of a quoted price, but I've never seen one go for, for more than 75 bucks. Uh, we'll drop it into your machine over Wi-Fi and help coach you through the project. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that I th- think I find interesting about it is that you're you can do this on any kind of uh, any size thing that you want. You mentioned eight by four by eight sheet of plywood. Well, that you can do on a C uh, on a CNC machine, you know. Yeah, the the fact that there's no scaling restriction is awesome. I mean, there's there's mm-hmm. a project, there's a video on YouTube where a guy taped up an entire floor uh, and installed. It was a it was uh, I think a music school, and he installed some big like music note inlays. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can go as big or as small as you want. Um, And uh, a couple with the fact, you know, it's portable uh, compared to other CNCs and uh, it truly is designed for the woodworker. That's the whole kind of ideology behind those three steps is keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. um, And then from those three steps, you can make it as, you know, basic and accessible as, uh, as you want it or as specific and complex as you need it to be. 
Well, you've just gotten a, a little uh, an unsolicited testimonial here from Kate T, who could even do this after three shots of whiskey, which is, uh, you know. <laughs> Cheers, Kate T. Yeah, right. Yep. What is the absolute accuracy? Yeah, so it's uh, rated to be ac- – well, there's a lot of factors that can affect that. If you've had nine whiskey shots and you're ripping the t- – tool around you know <laughs> yeah, uh, you're, okay. you're probably within a 64th of an inch but uh if you're doing it by the book uh you know kind of as we recommend uh it we, we rate it at up to a thousandth of an inch wow okay wow oh. what type of transporter is available once you buy the unit it's a good question look we we are kind of a san francisco tech company and one thing we've done incredibly well is uh basically upload our YouTube channel as well as our website with every kind of video. And we keep it short, you know, uh, there's an unboxing video, like here's the parts of the tool. Here's kind of what you need to know in order to make your first cut. So I think all the support you need is out there. Um, as long as you just do a little diligence to, to try and locate it. Um, there are, uh, basically it's very, very easy to get comfortable with this tool and you can get comfortable very quickly, at least with the basics. In terms of the deep dive topics, something that uh, we started as a company during COVID is something called Shaper Sessions. Uh, They're every other Thursday live on YouTube. We built this phenomenal, awesome studio, uh, which is much more professional looking than my garage. But um, (laughs) every other Thursday, and they they will do a deep dive topic uh, into, uh, you know, a subject that somebody has voted in. Uh, like, you know, one week they were doing dovetails, uh, one week it was talking about designing in fusion 360 versus SketchUp. Uh, one week was based on inlays. So, uh, which all those videos, you know, they're broadcast live, but the recordings are uploaded there. So, um, you know, the resources are there and you can always shoot us a call or shoot us an email, uh, or I'm going to, uh, Joe, I'm going to send you an email, uh, kind of as a thank you that has my cell phone number and you can okay. just give me a call too. Perfect. And I'll pop that out to the membership. <clears throat> what uh, what changes have you seen or do you expect from the festival acquisition? Yeah, that was back in 2018. Um, well, it opened up a lot of uh, a lot of doors for us. Uh, I wish I could tell you kind of what's going on about in our research and development and what's planned for the future. I, I can't get into specifics, but uh, it, it's allowed us to focus on what we're good at inventing you know, uh, new technology that adds to traditional woodworking. We are not looking to replace uh, anything about traditional woodworking. We're a company of traditional woodworkers, but we are looking to add, you know, uh, some faster, more accurate ways to do certain stuff. So there's a lot of new things uh, that are planned kind of for the next 12 months as a rollout. And what's rest assured though, what's neat is none of it is like, like hardware driven. So when you buy one of these every year, we will do a major software update and actually add new features to your tool, which is always free. Um, So there's a lot of really cool stuff uh, in the works that's going to make this tool easier, uh, even easier than it is now. Um, And yeah, I just kind of stay tuned for that because I I can't lose my job. (laughs) Yeah, right. Uh, Well, when those things come out, why don't you you drop me an email and I'll pass it along to the uh, membership if if some new feature comes out that you think that we would like to know about a- a- absolutely and uh feel free to subscribe to our newsletter we do one we don't do one every day because you know we're all woodworkers we hate getting blasted with all this crap so anytime we send a newsletter it's something actually worthwhile um and in the thank you letter i'll send you there's a free project plan so make sure you guys check that out um and yeah there's just there's a lot more to come from shaper tools and uh it's been crazy our, our first dealer opened up uh, gosh, let's see, uh, a year and a half ago, almost today. So it's been a, a wild journey, but, uh, it's been very successful and it, it, it's amazing the different applications people are using this tool for. I mean, a three-step process, you know, how many different molds can that fit? But it's so inclusive of, you know, the different aspects of woodworking. It's, 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 a, it's a must have in the shop. I mean, that guitar, like I said, it's, it's not finished. You see, I still have the tape on it. So if I wanted to put the tool, it would recognize that, that space. Cause I, I think I might add some things to it, but it's, uh, you know, I, hopefully it's my generation's contribution to, to woodworking. It's uh, hey, a perfect is the, balance. 
It, okay. Is the, yeah. is the software slash firmware updated via Wi-Fi automatically? Uh, that's the best way to do it. If you really want, you can plug in a USB cord and, and, and do it via computer, but uh, it, it don't, you're cheating yourself out of some features if you don't connect it to Wi-Fi, but uh, there is an alternative way to update it, yes. Sure, okay. Well, uh, if there's any final questions, I'd be, uh, you know, now's your chance. Uh, uh, is there a plan to recognize a grid that can be drawn on the wood? Um, I'm not sure if I understand that one fully. Well, if you uh, if, instead of looking for the edges of the wood, if you just had a grid on the wood, because you, you, you're recognizing the, let's call it the domino pattern. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say you had a you had a reference point on the wood and said you wanted to go from that reference point. Uh, uh, good question. So you can do that. Um, like if I were to like basically trace a straight line onto my wood, instead of uh, basically uh, uh, probing uh, up against the edge, I could use the engraving bit to basically drop the tip of that bit onto that trace line or wherever I needed to be. And there is a way to kind of create a grid in, in the middle of a piece. Um, there's a video on it for, for kind of more specifics, but th that is absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, are you working oh. with Woodcraft to sell Origin? Uh, select Woodcrafts, we are, uh, but kind of as like a blanket company, not yet. We're, we're still trying to uh, kind of uh, to, to crack that, that nut. Um, but so every Rockler carries the full assortment. Um, and let's see the, the Woodcraft and uh, let's, there's only a couple Woodcrafts, the one in Tucson, none in your area, one in Tucson and, and one out on the um, uh, two in Colorado and one on the East coast. Okay, cool. All righty. Well, this has been really, really helpful, Joe. And uh, this is a, this is a pretty incredible tool. And, uh, it, uh, I mean, and I know you just kind of touched the, you, you know, the surface, but uh, sure. you know, the nice thing is with this tool is, is you can go down to any depth up to an inch and a half. So this is a good deal. All right. 1.7. No, thank you. 1.7 even oh. better. Yeah. And, and hopefully you guys didn't feel like you were drinking from a fire hose. I was trying to, kind of cram as much as I could in. Um, but, uh, you know, scan, design, cut, no need for luck. Uh, yeah. 2,500 for the origin, 450 for the workstation, save 50 bucks if you get them all together. So thank right. you very, very much for including me. And uh, I hope that uh, you guys would uh, allow me to come back for future presentations once we have uh, some of those things in the pipeline rolled out, which I very vaguely hinted at. Yeah, I would think that would be kind of fun. So we might see you again in, the, in a few months. So, uh, yeah, let's keep that in mind. That's great. All right. Well, All guys, right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my contact will be in my little thank you, which, uh, Joe, I'll send to you, and you can kind of distribute it at uh, your discretion. Perfect. So That'll be great. All right. Thank you. All right. As far All as right. I know, thanks a lot.